You can do anything you need to do to succeed. You can lie, you can steal, That's you right. can cheat, yes. you can kill. Anything you do to maintain control of your kingdom. However, to the outside world, you must always appear to be honest, honest upright, virtuous, and have integrity, right. and virtuous. Yes. The more powerful you get, which they always say, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Right. Machiavelli used to say, when you got them by their balls, their hearts and minds will follow. Exactly. This I want to get into you, Machiavelli. Yes. I, I don't know anybody else other than my old friends on the street that were into Machiavelli. Yeah. And uh, you know, I saw your, your YouTube, and you—it <laughs> was so funny. I, I was—I was kind of laughing. Go, see, he really gets it. You know, it's, it, Chaz really gets it. When we went to prison, it was almost required reading. You Absolutely. Read Machiavelli. My dad, you got to. He used to quote Machiavelli all the time. Right. And um, <laughs> I'm writing a book. I'll tell you what happens. I, I write this business book a couple of years back and uh, did pretty well. I'm making an offer you can't refuse. You know, I didn't create the title. Right. Book. But uh, my publisher says, I want you to write another book. I said, okay, what do you want me to write? He said, I want you to write a political book. Good timing. I said, okay. I said, let me think about it. So now, obviously, I still have some old feelings about the government, you know, sure. from the street. And the way I see the government, I'm not going to get political. I'm just telling you to yeah. give me the book. I'm saying, you know, the government is acting so much like the mob. They're so Machiavellian in the way they operate. Yes. And I see it in so many ways. Of course, yes. So I said, I'm going to write a book. It's going to be called A Mafia Democracy. And it's going to be how I see the government today. I start writing the book. This was five years ago. Obama was president. And I said, this isn't a gimmick. I'm going to do the research. I'm going to do it right. After I get into it, I write about five chapters, and I tell my wife, I said, these people are going to get upset with me. I said, because this is real. Not Republican, not Democratic, right. just the system. And I said, what do I need this for? Everything's good in my life. I don't need no right. headaches, right? I go back to my publisher. I said, I'm not writing the book. Here's the advance. I'm done, right? Right. Cut to just a couple of months ago. I feel a responsibility to write this book now. Right. Because you know what, Chaz? And this is true of a lot of my former associates. We may have been criminals, but we loved our country. Yes. We loved our country. A lot yes. of guys went to war. They fought for uh, this Absolutely. country in, 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 in Vietnam and World War II. They fought for We love our country. And when we see things going wrong, we want to do something. So I want to make people aware. So now I went back. Now I'm writing the book. It'll probably be released at the end of the summer. Great. Early, uh, but there's so many things that Machiavelli warned us or when he was... He was uh, uh, consulting the prince and yes. how to maintain control of his kingdom. Yes. So many things that I see in government today. I'll give you one example. Machiavelli always said this. He said, you can do anything you need to do to succeed. You can lie. You can steal. That's you right. can cheat. Yes. You can kill. Anything you do to maintain control of your kingdom. However, to the outside world, you must always appear to be honest, honest upright, virtuous, and have integrity, right. and virtuous. Yes. And I said, what am I looking at now? And these are only some of the things that yes. I see. So Machiavelli, he was a brilliant guy. Brilliant. No, no question about it. He was brilliant. really the beginning of political science, yes. if you think about it. Yes. Brilliant. And some of the things he said I agree with. Yes. And some of the things are just way <laughs> off base. Way, well, you just go, <laughs> Way off base. You go, whoa. Well, he right. believed that men were basically innately immoral. Yeah. He believed that. Well, you know, you know what I, I believe, dude? I believe we're born with a sinful nature. Yes. I do believe that. We yes. weren't born as, you know, perfect people. We were born with a sinful nature. Right. And, of course, there's so many distractions in our life that lead us right. in that direction. And you really got to fight that off in, in your life many, many times. Many you times. fight it off to be a good Especially person. Especially when you're in power. Yes. The more powerful you get, which they always say, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Right. Machiavelli used to say, when you got them by their balls their hearts and minds will follow. Exactly. And he's right. He, he's 100% he's right. He's 100% right. Because you will believe it in your mind because 
<laughs> you, you start saying, yeah, yeah, he's right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, he's right, yeah, I agree with him. Come on, you know, it's different. And with him, the end justified the means. The ends will justify whatever the means. Whatever he needed to do to maintain power, keep control, or whatever. And, uh, you know, I just see our government operating that way. So, I mean, right. I'm, I'm writing this book, and, and hopefully everything will be all right. I told my, uh, my accountant, make sure all my taxes are paid. Right, <laughs> well, the book comes I out. think if, as long as you don't name names, as long as you don't name, if you name, if you start naming people, then they could, you know, because then people could, could say something. You know, because we used to say, I used to say that the worst thing the wise guys did was when they wanted to be on the cover of Time magazine. Oh, I mean, God. that's the old, the old time bosses, the ones that I knew, the old time bosses, they drove regular cars, they didn't dress up fancy. I said, this is the, uh, he's the boss? I said, no shit, really? You know, I, again. They like, didn't live their life like bosses to the outside world. No. They didn't. No, but as soon as, you know, I remember when, when Nicky Barnes was on the cover of Time. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Yeah. And I remember the guy saying, done, he's done. I remember him saying it in the club. See this? He's done. Yeah. And you know what? Months later, done. Yeah. And any high pro. I mean, that's what killed Gotti. Uh, yes. Joe Colombo, the same thing. They all, oh, they it. all died like, they all got whacked like that. Once you do that, yeah. and that's why the chin lasted so long. Yeah. Because he never opened his mouth, he never said nothing, and he, you know. He didn't want anybody. He didn't want anybody. Yeah. Leave me alone. Get away from me. Don't mention my name. Don't say nothing. Yeah. That's the way it was done. Different. Different, different times, yeah. Different times. You, know you know, the other thing I used to say, I, if you remember, there was a time when every day you picked up the New, the New York paper, there would be a mob story in there every single day. Yes. Now, maybe every six months. Right. So I'm saying maybe, look, I know guys are still around. Maybe they just realize, you know, stay quiet and go and do their thing and then stay. Yeah, the you know, I, I think you're right, Michael. I, th I think you're right. And it's not the way it was. No. You know, it's not the way it was at all. It'll never be like that again. You know, people look at the Godfather and they get glamorized. You know, uh, it wasn't like that in some spec. All right, but it, it, you can't glamorize that life because no. it's not. No, Chaz. You know, when I first started speaking, it was, it was amazing to me. Because, you know, you're in the life. That's your life. Right. But I never realized how fascinating that life is to people all around the world. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm in Singapore. Yes. Singapore. 1,300 people or whatever it was. You know, we sell it out. I'm speaking, just me. Afterwards, my, my host comes in and he says, Michael, we, uh, we promised the audience you're going to do a little bit of a Q&A. He said, but Singaporeans are very reserved. They don't ask questions. Right. He said, maybe we'll put a shill in. One or two questions we did. I said, right. great. We'll go home early, right? Exactly. Chaz, I was there two hours. Yeah. And the questions, where is Jimmy Hoffa buried? Right. I'm not, I get asked that all the time. Right. Like I know. Right? Like, like you know, there, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, about Gotti, about the movie. I, I couldn't believe it. Because this I'm is the Singapore. closest they could get to it is through you. Yeah. You know, the closest they could get to it is through, look, I would be, I grew up with these guys, and I would love, I'm not on camera, but I would love to sit and talk to you about certain things. I wouldn't do it on camera, but just, you know, to talk. So I can imagine how they feel. Unbelievable. It's you know, the platform. I would go, when I first started speaking, I'm in the Midwest. Right. I, I had a lot of publicity in New York, but nobody knew me in the Midwest. Right. right? I go to a place, they sell out because the mob guy is here. It didn't even, it didn't even matter what my name was at that point. But they know you're the, like I always say, you're the real deal. Very rare do you get a guy, think about it, yeah. who else besides you? Now, I mean, now a lot of mob guys have podcasts, you know, whatever. But, they, but you, so it's not the same, but it's, you have to be engaging. You have to be... Uh, you know, you're, you're, very, you're very bright, you're very engaging. And, and I believe that people develop an aura around them. I, bet, I would bet my life that you were always likable and you were always like a star, in a way, to other people. You were always likable. I would, and I'm not blowing smoke, I, could, I would bet that because I was like that. I was always likable, everybody always loved me. I, I must sound like a real asshole now. No, but no, no, I, I just speak from the heart, yeah. you know. And it's just one of those guys that was blessed. You know, I was blessed, you are blessed. That's it, I'm sorry. I'm, anybody who wasn't blessed, I'm sorry. But I was blessed, you know, and we're blessed. Because you, you just got an aura, and you're, you're bright, you're engaging. And when I, when, I watch the, when I watch your podcast, 
and I watch it, and I listen to it, and I fall listening to it. I go, wow, you know, you speak very, you have a lot of humility, you speak, you don't speak, I did this, I did that, You're like some of these guys. I go, you know, I don't want to watch you. I don't want to watch you. I don't care if, I don't care if you're real or not. I don't want to watch you. Yeah. You know, I've, I've seen guys like you before. I don't need to know. I'm not going to learn anything from you. If I could learn something from somebody, I want to talk to them. Because my, De Niro, one thing he always taught me, nobody's that bright, he used to say. Nobody's that smart, Chaz. That's why Bob was very funny. If Bob would meet you, and, and if he knew that you knew something that he didn't know, he would ask you. I remember well, there was this guy once, he got shot, and he had his, he, he was wrapped. And uh, this was many, many years ago, and the story was, when Bob met him, Bob would say, really, you got shot? What did it feel like? Yeah. Like what? No, tell me what it felt like, and when you felt that, really, did it go in right away? Did it? Did you feel something? And he's doing that for research. I know well, exactly I, why he's I'm doing say it. Research. I know exactly why he's doing it because he's so. That's how exact he is, and I, you know. And I'm like that. I want to know what was it like. You know, I did a movie Mulholland Falls mm -hmm. with Nick Nolte, yeah, and when we come out of the thing, I, I asked this guy who got shot. Well, I've never been shot, and he says he got cold. I said, you, really? He goes, yeah. You, he goes, what that means is you're dying. Hmm. When you, and, I, and I remember And I remember when I came out of the airplane with Nick Nolte, I, I told the, the director, I'm going to add some stuff. I said, I feel cold. Hmm. I feel, you know, and I remember. And yeah. it, it, it adds to that. Oh, yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. I got to say something to you. You, you said something in, uh, in one of your podcasts I was listening to about made guys. You right. A friend. Yes. And uh, you met with him. And he got straightened out. He got straightened out. Well, I, I talked about for a second. He, um, he was a man's man, like I said. And a guy who um, I'm just blessed that I had his friendship for, uh, we were friends, met him at nine years old, and uh, we were friends for like 60 years. I mean, spoke every day on the phone. So, like, I, I, re and I don't know if you ever had a friend like that where you just lose a close friend, where kind of like a piece of you is gone. It's just gone. You don't know. Sometimes you walk around, and you think you're going to call him on the phone, and you can't. And you would say, "Well, tell us, tell us what happened." What happened was uh, he was a guy I grew up with. Mm -hmm. We played basketball together, right? And you definitely know him. that I know, mm -hmm. absolutely. So we, and then I got, I, you know, I went away, I became famous and we lost touch and whatever. But we were friends, we were all friends playing basketball. And then finally, uh, I came back in 95 like that and I heard he got straightened out. And, he, and I saw him and we were all were on the corner, a bunch of guys on the corner and we we're talking, you know. There was like not some wise guys there and some friends over the wise guys, we're all laughing. And he said something and I said, oh, come on, what the fuck do you know? But kidding, right. you know, but he's my friend, we grew, we grew up, right. you know? And it was like, I could feel like a little something happened here, you know? And he said, can I talk to you a second? I said, yeah. And he gave me like the elbow thing, you know, the mm -hmm. elbow walk, you know, when right. they, get you, they pull you like four feet to the side. <laughs> I call it the elbow walk, you know? <laughs> right. And he goes, you know, you know what happened when you and me, you know, you know. They wouldn't say it. I go, right. what? You know, the thing, what happened with me, you know, you, know, you heard about it, right? And I went, oh, then I realized. I went, yes, congratulations. I hugged him, I kissed him. He goes, you know, do me a favor, Chaz. You, know, you, you can't talk to me like that anymore. And I was really nice. I said, absolutely, you're absolutely right. I understood what he said, mm -hmm. Michael. I said, I apologize. He goes, no, no, come on, stop. You know, you kissed me. And that was it. Right. It was different. You understand because... I got to say, there's some guys that say things, you know, about made guys. That, but you understood when you reached that point in your life, you were different. It was hands off. It was, it was hands just off. different. You, you had to be talked to differently, yeah, treated differently. Respected differently. Yeah, and, and it was the life that caused that to happen. That's one of the reasons why the life lasted as long as it did. Yes. Because there was that discipline, that structure, that and I, the guys. And I didn't, get, I didn't, I didn't go, who the fuck you think? With, right. I was like, understood. I understood. Yeah. I apologize. I totally get it. Hugged him, kissed him, said, hey, man, congratulations, good luck. You know, but I, I get it. But the mom got, you know, I always tell this story to people. I was on Broadway in uh, 82. I was an understudy. 
on Broadway. Mm -hmm. It's a true story. I'm another study on Broadway. So now I go back to the neighborhood and I tell everybody, I said, hey, I'm on Broadway. Everybody's freaking out. You're on Broadway. My friends are hugging, kissing me. It's a big deal. Neighborhood guy, I'm on Broadway, right? So the wise guys come over to me and they go, hey, we want to come and see you. Can we come? I said, oh, oh, I said, no. I said, well, you can't come and see me. And, he's, and he's, he thought I was embarrassed because of him. I, he goes, well, you embarrassed? We can't come. I said, no, 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 you don't understand. I said, I'm an understudy. Mm -hmm. And he said, what's an understudy? I said, well, if something happens to the guy, then I go on. Right. I'm an understudy. And he just looked at me and go, oh. So I walked away, not realizing what I just said to this guy. And I'm talking to my friends. And he comes back over to me. And he goes, hey, Chaz. I go, yeah. He goes, you want to go on? <laughs> and, I, and I said, excuse me? I didn't realize what he was saying to me. He yeah. goes, you want to go on? I said, go on. Then I realized what he was saying. I'm going to get rid of the other guy. Yeah. I said, no. <laughs> I said, no, no, no. You can't do that. I was thinking the same thing. Jeff. I said, no. And he's going, no, we'll make it look like a mugging. Nobody's going to know. I said, no. <laughs> he goes, we'll put him in the hospital two, three weeks. It'll be f But he was dead serious. Yeah. I said, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I said, please, don't do this. I was really scared, right? Well, they would have done it. No, no question. <laughs> My hand to God, they would have done it. But the moral of the story is that night, as an understudy, you have to sit in the audience and watch every performance because in case something happens to him, you have to go on, right. right? I'm sitting there, and this guy was a real asshole. I didn't like the guy because he didn't treat me nice. Right. You know, he treated me like an, under, like an understudy, you know. And I'm sitting there, Michael, and I'm sitting there watching the show, and I'm looking at him, and I'm saying to myself, pal, you don't <laughs> know how lucky you are. You have no idea what I just did for you. Right. But I never forgot that story. Right. But it was like nothing. Yeah. I we'll, mean, the, we'll just take care of it. That's reality. It was know. almost like it, it just struck me and, and analyzed this when De Niro tells Billy Crystal, you want me to get rid of your patients for you? I'll take care of Remember? <laughs> right. When I get back to New York, I will treat you exclusively, okay? For two weeks. Yeah, I just have to figure out what I'm going to tell my other patients. You want me to clear your schedule for you? Oh, no. I will be my honor to do uh, that. No, my I pleasure. Will, no. Jimmy! No, no, not Jimmy. I will do this myself. You sure? Uh, yes, positive. I will see you in New York. Okay. <laughs> right. I'll take care of it. Let me, no, no, no. I, I love the thing you said about Billy, because Billy's really an underrated oh, actor. Billy's great. What happened was, when we did the movie, there was a couple of lines in there, but then I added like a bunch of stuff. Mm. When we did, uh, I said, Vinny Boombats, Mikey Gaga, <laughs> Billy <laughs> Joe B. I'm Primo Saddam. They call me Sonny Long. Some of you know me as Mikey Gaga. Some of you know me as Joey Boombats. And so he watched me do it, Billy, and got such a kick out of it that he said, he told the ha Harold, who passed away, he was a great director. Mm -hmm. He says, I want to do an improv with that. That was all improv with Billy did. Was, that wasn't in the script. Sure. Billy goes, yeah, thing, smoking thing, but that's another story. <laughs> but Billy, stockings with it. That was a total was improv. Perfect. I'm also known... As uh, Benny the Groin, Sammy the Schnoz, uh, Elmer the Fudd, Tubby the Tuba, and once as Miss Phyllis Levine. But that was at a party, it was years ago. I smoked at the Tupet and I had a Quakalud, and then suddenly I'm in fishnets and singing show tunes. These things happen, but it has nothing to do with what I'm here with you fine gentlemen today. So I apologize. That being said, I'm also known to the people who know me the best as the fucking doctor. And he was great. And that's what made that scene so great. Terrific. Easter Sunday, remember? It was <laughs> Easter Sunday. <laughs> and he's going like that. <laughs> he was so good. And then when he hits Jelly, which, by the way, I loved, I, I forget his Oh, name. Joe Vitarelli. Oh, he was terrific. He was so good in that movie. He was so real. I mean, yeah. he was a real, he wasn't made, but he right. was a guy. He was a street guy. He was not a made guy. No. I always care for that. Everybody, because everybody walks around going, yeah, I'm, I was made. Get the fuck out of here, yeah. you made. Yeah, everybody's made. Yeah, yeah, everybody's made. No, when you're made, you you know, come on, stop it. Exactly. You know, they're all made, all these the, the California wise guys. They're not made. You know, they say they're made because people get impressed with them. But it's a different thing, I, and I always, I, I emphasize that. I go, Michael is the real deal. That's a made guy. The other guy, I mean, are, are there other guys? There are a few guys that I know that have podcasts. I know they were made. You know, okay, that's, I, I, a few of them, you know who they are. They were made, yeah. But most of them are not made. No, you're right about that. Yeah. But, you know, a lot of war stories being told that uh, 
that are in their minds. That are in their heads, yes. yeah. No and I said to myself, yeah, well, but it's a different thing. See, you have a way of ta telling the war story where it's entertaining. You have to make it funny. You have to make it palatable. People, but if you just say it the way it is, that's why people think I, people thought I was a wise guy. I said, look, pal, I've never been a wise a lot of, guy. A lot of guys have said that to me. Oh, Chad, the way he played that role, he had to have some good street connections. Yeah. Well, I say he probably knew people. I know, knew I'm people sure, yeah. very well, yeah, and I hung out with them. Mm -hmm. But I was never a mob guy. I'd never been arrested. Mm -hmm. I never got in trouble. I, I tried to go to school. I, I had great parents. Mm -hmm. that really said, don't waste your talent. My two ch sisters, I have two sisters, they weren't in the movie, and they're still pissed off about that, but they weren't <laughs> in the movie, and both very successful, mm -hmm. very successful, both of them. So we had great parents, but I just grew up there with them, and like, you, like I told you before, when they had to do something, I walked away. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, it was like, okay, but I studied them and watched them, and I remembered every line they ever said. I just had this knack of remembering things. You know, just, I remember a wise guy said something to me, not to me, Michael. He, again, you, you know who he is. We walked into a, we were sitting around, a, they walked into, it wasn't a sit down, they were just sitting down eating or something. The guy said to him, somebody sat at the head, at the head of the table before he should have sat there. Mm -hmm. And the guy went, oh, oh, I'm sorry. He went, re he realized what he did. He was getting up. And he said, no, 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 sit down. He goes, that's right. He goes, wherever I sit is the head of the table. <laughs> I never forgot that line. Yeah. And I said, I got to put that line in a movie somewhere. That's great. Yeah. He goes, come on, stop. Wherever I sit is the head of the table. Mm -hmm. The way he said it, you know, just like that. Boom. And sat down. He didn't care. But I was like, oh, shit. Well, see, know. that's what I mean when I say that, you know, you and the guys I mentioned played the role somebody like that yeah because there were a lot of guys that just their presence commanded respect oh yeah you know and you, you know fat tony even though he he didn't look the part yeah. in a certain way but he he was a guy with dignity commanded respect just from his presence right. the way he spoke the way well, he, he spoke. carried himself yeah but you know my father the same way yes first ago this guys that i really you right. know I, I looked up to them just for the way they carried themselves exactly you know but one thing I, I learned about this, Michael, there was these two guys, and you know, I always say you know them, I know you do. Anyway, they were partners early on, these two guys. And they were, um, this one guy was a feared guy, both, but he had a partner, and they were both, but he was the feared guy. And they were, they, they, I know, I mean, they're all dead now, so it doesn't matter. They were, they were selling junk, right? Mm -hmm. but, but what they would do is when they would get it, they would step on it and then sell it. Mm -hmm. And the bosses knew that, mm -hmm. you know, so the bosses told them, hey, we're giving you this, just give it here. Mm -hmm. But they would get it and step on it to make for themselves. Right. You know, they can't help themselves, they got to right. steal. And I hear this guy's partner got whacked. Mm -hmm. I remember, everybody said, I said, they said, who got, you got whacked? I said, holy shit. What about the, uh, what about the other guy, you know, the, bo the guy I knew? Mm -hmm. I said, what is he doing? He said, I don't know. I said, is he going to get whacked? He's his partner. I said, I don't know. And I'm standing on the corner, Michael. I'm a young kid. I'm in my teens. And I'm standing on the corner, and, and the car pulls up. And there's four guys, in, there's uh, three guys in the back seat. He had three bodyguards. Mm -hmm. He wasn't riding shotgun, this guy, the boss, mm -hmm. and the driver. And he pulls up, they pull up, and they stop. And Michael, I never forgot this story. This is the boss now. Mm -hmm. Turns to me and looks at me. And I look at him, and our eyes meet. And then he just turned his head back and they took off. But I'll never forget it, Michael. There was fear in his eyes. Mm. And I never saw a man like that be scared. Like you could see the fear. He looked at me like, and then turned his eyes like that. And I said, holy shit. And I'm telling my friends, I said, I just saw, and he's scared shit. And it was like, no matter how big you think you are, you can get whacked, you know? You know, it's funny, when you said that just now, it brought, it made me think of something. This just happened two years ago. My father was in the Veterans Hospital. Right. I, I can't tell you the whole story because, right. because it was crazy what happened. Well, let me tell you, anyway. And I'm in there, I go visit him, right? He's 102 years old. It's amazing. Amazing. I go visit him, and we're sitting there, he's in a wheelchair, we're talking, and the uh, hospital administrator says, Michael, I need to talk to you on the side. I says, okay. I go on his side, he said, look, I gotta send your father back to the hospital. 
I said, why? What's wrong? He says, well, a nurse was doing something. He made a nasty remark to the nurse, said, like he's looking to do something with the <laughs> nurse. I says, my dad's 102 years old. What's he, he going to do? You know? Right. Uh, whenever we have something like that, we got to send him out of here. That's the law. I said, you got to send him back. I said, I just got here. I want to visit with him. Right. Now, I said, when is the ambulance coming? He says, coming right now, you know, to put him in there. Yeah. I said, oh, my God. So I grabbed my dad. I said, Dad, what'd you do? He said, what do you mean? You know, my dad denied everything. That of course. Enough. I said, Dad, you know what? I got to send you back to the hospital. As they're putting him in, I never saw fear on my dad's face. But he, like, looked around. He was looking at the ambulance. He was looking at everybody. And I saw fear in his eyes. And I'm saying, what is he afraid of? And now I'm thinking, you know, maybe he thought this was some kind of a setup. I, right. I, I still don't know, and I never asked him. Wow. But it stayed in my mind, because I never... Because you never I, saw I, that. I never seen fear in right. his eyes, ever. This guy was a... He used to walk around, this guy. He was like, whoa. When he walked into a place, whoa. Right. But when I saw that fear in his eyes, I never forgot that. And you were 19. I was, yeah. I was, and, in, I was in my... Yeah. And until now, you know, you, know, you, you forgot it. You, you never forget it once you see I never forgot like it, and I always wanted to write that in a movie, and I never did, because I never saw the fear in his eyes like that. For a guy like that to be scared, I was like, holy shit. But they didn't, they, they had to sit down and they mm -hmm. gave him a pass, so they didn't whack him, because he's still around. You know, right. well, he's dead now. Right. But you definitely. Well, you remember things like that. I remember. You know, I, I'll take this to my grave with my dad because... You remember? It, yeah. It you me. just... It was the, his face when I saw it. I was like, wow. I mean, there was a wise guy in my neighborhood. He was a boss. I don't know if you remember, but this is... I guess I could say... His name was Little Johnny in my neighborhood in the mm -hmm. Bronx. He was a boss. And there was this guy, Crazy Red. And Crazy Red was... It was they, they used to have a crap game and what Crazy Red used to do he had red hair with freckles. So he would lose all his money. He would go out, put a handkerchief on his face, and come back in with a gun. But they knew it was right. him. Same clothes, <laughs> same clothes with freckles with red hair. So they said, they used to go, red, we know it's you, you can't do this. But he was so crazy, they would let him take the right. thing. So he did it a couple of times. So they went to the boss, Johnny, and they said, hey, Johnny, you know, you got to talk to him. We, we, we didn't know what to do. We, we, we're we're going to whack this guy. If we, he said, no, he's a crazy. Let me talk to him. So he walked over to him. And he said, look, you can't do this anymore, kid. You know, but, and he used to smoke a cigar, Johnny. And he went like this. Pushed the cigar right in his face. They, they, he ran away. My father told me, I'll never forget it. My father told me, he said, Crazy Red's getting whacked. I said, yeah, I heard what he did. He goes, no. They told me, if you see him, stay away from him. Mm. They told my father that. And my father knew right away he was getting right. whacked. Showed in hell two days later. God. 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 One of the uh, dangers of that life, I would say. Well, you know, it's a boss. You know, you, you don't. You don't act like you can't, You're going to die. <laughs> you can't do that. But he was crazy. Yeah. But you know what? They had to, they had to kill him. Yeah. You don't get a pass on that. But I couldn't believe it. They gave this guy a pass. He must have had to sit down here. Well, he was well liked, but they whacked his partner, but I'm sure they didn't step on anything anymore. You know, my dad taught me so many things that helped me so much during that life. Wow. Hey, Should make a movie about that. Hey, I got a great writer here. Oh, no. <laughs> Frank was the only guy that I could never get over who he was. I'd be in, it'd be in his company like we are right now, and every once in a while I go, man, it's Frank Sinatra. Jesus, God, I'm talking to Frank Sinatra. I just couldn't get over it. I don't know what it was. He was like life, big enough. Now, Michael, you share what you learn, like going through the skin of the dragon, and you're taking that and you're passing it out there. My pleasure. It was a pleasure. God bless. This is maybe the first of many times we Absolutely, yeah, let's get together. Let's hang out a little bit.